And in uh, figure 48, you see um, uh, that's a C- the CNN. I think Aaron Brown is the is, you know, it's the Good Lord video. I call it. He says Good Lord. You know, when he plays it, um, you can see that it, it's like the steel column just kind of faints into dust. There's a whole lot of different views. You know, people say it falls over. Well, if it fell over to the far direction, if you looked at a, a video 45, I mean, 90 degrees to that, you should be able to see it tipping over. You don't see it tipping over. How about, you know, 180 degrees from that? You don't see it tipping over. 270 degrees from that, you don't see it tipping over. There's, there's video of it all around. It doesn't tip over. Plus, you'd see, uh, you know, 700 feet tall, if it fell onto an adjacent building, it would, it would, it would take out, you know, a couple of city blocks. It would slice them, the buildings. Didn't happen. You don't see it down in the rubble field. And what I think that is, uh, is the, the top of stairwell B, the top of that area where the 14 people survived, below that. Well, so will be. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's uh, you know, you can look and see. It's, it, it looks like in some of the uh, higher um, uh, definition what videos that have been released since then, you can see I call them little stringies, little uh, wires and stuff hanging out of, the, you know, the if you get close enough to the that tall column, you know, little crisp wires sticking out or rebar or something. It's you know, and uh, and then you can notice it. It looks like it's the stairwell in there, that region. Right. Um, so, so that's that's uh, dustification. So it, it's not pulverization. Pulverization is something banging against something. That's kinetic energy that causes pulverization. Like somebody getting a hammer and sm- smashing something against a rock. That's kinetic energy. Um, if you cook something until it becomes a gas, that's vaporization. Neither one of those things apply. We see a building right. turn to dust. Instead of using... Not evaporation either. Right, because that's that's like vaporization. It's uh, so we need a different term. And instead of using the inappropriate term, because then you're going to assume heat caused. It's kind of like calling the haze, calling it smoke. You're going to assume fire is the cause rather than something turning to dust. So I use this new word, and it's very easy to use because it, it's obvious what it means: dustification. The definition of it is whatever it was that was happening there. Yeah, the the it, instead of being a solid unit, it turned into dust as it fell. Dustified. Yep, dustified. It needs to be added to the dictionary because we haven't seen this before. It's a new phenomenon, so it needs a new word to describe it. Yep. So it's notable, no, and, and you can visually see it turn to dust. Yep, and and a lot of folks, uh, you know, to to try to. You know, answer the the detractors who say, "Oh, she's using, you know, idiot terms." Or, "Oh, she's trying to dumb it down for you." No, that is not the case. This is the most scientific way of describing. It. You can call it characteristic two nine seven dash three a. That's hard to remember. I, instead, I call it dustification. That word isn't in the dictionary, so it can't be confused with anything else. And I think it, we know the meaning of it from the from the root of the word dust. So dustification is, you know. A good placeholder in case we do find something uh, that's already been defined, but it's it's whatever it is that's going on here. We're calling it justification, and I don't think right. we've seen that before. No, no. And but but that is an, a very important lesson. It's instead of making an assumed problem, we're not going to solve an assumed problem, an imaginary problem. We're going to solve the real thing. So we're just going to call it this term for convenience, so we don't. So we can break the habit of calling it something that's inappropriate, like like uh, uh, pulverization or vaporization or evaporation. Because you, you know, if we don't know that that's what the correct term is, or, or aerosolization, that's a specific process. We don't know that's what the process is, but we can be correct, absolutely scientifically correct, if we call it dustification, as long as we define that term. Right. So, shall we look at the bathtub then? Because that yeah. didn't break either. Yeah, well, the, the section right below there is, is lather. That's just my term for the opaque dustification. And like what Building 7 was doing all afternoon, you had this opaque, you know, wall of stuff coming out of it. I call that lather. You know, it's just, it's just opaque. 
It's not, it's not wispy. And you, somebody, I don't know if you asked or somebody else asked about uh, Tower 1 and 2 did the same kind of thing. Figure 50. Yeah, figure 50 shows Tower 1 lathering up. One face. But it just did it for, very briefly. Yeah, I used to like to chat room. Figure 50. Figure 50. Figure 50. Ah. You see, that's, that's the North Tower. And you can tell it's the North Tower because it's got that radio, uh, TV antenna poking up out of the middle. That yeah. identifies. That's, that's not an image you don't, you don't often see. You don't often see many truth Oh, movie why don't people. they? Yeah. Guess why? <laughs> you can't that's say that's fire. An image. No, you can't. You know, well, it's a, it's, 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 if there were fires on a few floors, it's not going to do that on the entire side of the building. Right. Yeah, sure. We have this, so, some process that's black, some process that's, that's you know the lighter color. Uh, fine. It, we don't need to define what those are if we don't know. Just you have the you know lighter uh, dustification and darker dustification because that describes right. what we see in the picture. And that was right after Tower Two went poof and the dust cloud was kind of rolling out. And folks can say, well, that was the dust cloud from from uh, Tower Two. Well, Tower Two is only a few feet away. How did it get? Uh, uniformly up the side of Tower One to cover One the whole face. That means that tower, that that's proof that Tower Two had to turn to dust <laughs> in order to have done that. If that's what somebody's going to going to state. Yeah. So we, you know, not knowing exactly what's going on here, you can you know either it's emanating from Tower One or it rolled up the side. But if it rolled up the side, that dark stuff at the top would be punched up further. Yeah. If you had a big updraft. So it, but it, but you, it captures you, you, something you, you, happening. Building seven doesn't support that because building seven's got nothing lathering up against it. It's just it's on its own and it's doing exactly the same thing here. So you could yeah, say, but, oh, it's building two fell down and it lathered up against side of building one. But then what and fell it, down and lathered up against building seven? Seven started nothing. lathering up before Tower One went poof. So if someone wants to say it's, it's a debris from Tower One, look at Figure Fifty One. I call it the shower scene. They're lathering up together. <laughs> now, building seven and Tower One. Okay, yep. That was when uh, uh, Building 7 started lathering up. And uh, maybe it's a good time to mention it. It wasn't two buildings, just two buildings that were destroyed that day. It wasn't just three buildings that were destroyed that day. It wasn't just four buildings that were destroyed that day. It wasn't just five. It wasn't just six. All seven buildings with the WTC prefix were destroyed that day, four of which were towers. And I define a tower as something taller than it is wide. So there are four towers, not three. There are four towers. There's a 22-story building three, which is this little skinny thing bent building that was real. It was between uh, tower one and two and parallel to the bathtub wall. But we look at that later. But it was seven buildings. Seven. Okay. What what uh, would you like to talk about next? It, see, at the top of each section, there's a little, you, little tiny link that says index. I'll take yeah, it back up to the well, index. I, I asked you what uh, evidence there was that suggested that the buildings didn't slam to the ground, and you gave me three examples. And um, bath, you said breaking the bathtub, but one of them we haven't even done that yet. So, um, okay, yeah, I then, really let's want go to, to let's let's go to G uh, bathroom. Now I don't have a seismic chart in this one, but there's there's ones elsewhere. I think you you played some already last week. But go to uh, okay. you know, you jump you can jump up to the top by hitting the little link at the top of each section, and then click yeah. on the button next to G. And we're going to talk about seismic impact. Okay. Um, and we have this, uh, you know, this bathtub wall. It's, you think of it as, as really a, a dike. And uh, they brought in, you know, trucked in dirt and filled it in. Now, what you see in figure 35, some, some of the figures have duplicate numbers. I haven't changed it because I refer to them and I don't want the, to get out of sync with the recording. Um, but, um, what you see in the, in the distance is World Financial Center buildings. Two and three that were right across the street from uh, building um, uh, from Tower One, and you're looking at the footprint of Tower One. See that kind of uh, puddle on top of some shiny concrete there, or what looks like shiny yeah. concrete? That's the very bottom of the bathtub, right at the very base of all of Tower One. Now look there's in the no distance. Ground, there's, no, there's no underground there of Tower One. There's, there's nothing are. further. There's nothing further down. We're at the very bottom. Now look in the right. distance on the right, and you see uh, you can count down seven stories. That those are the parking garages below Tower Six or Building Six. To the right hand side. 
Yeah, see that you have the you have the yellow level, the oh, pink level, the yeah. blue level. Yeah, you know, so yeah, you know yeah, where your yeah. car was parked. Hmm. So you know where your car was parked. Yep. And they didn't want to take that down too soon because it's it's supporting uh, the bathtub wall. That's the original bathtub wall. If you click on that picture, you should get a you know a big picture should open up, or you can paste yep. that link directly in. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give it to. Uh, you guys here. I've already pasted it into the chat room, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and look at the, the walls. That's not repaired. That's rust from years that's on that wall. This is the outer wall. The Hudson's on the other side. And it was, there's actually another wall they built, uh, further down because they wanted to build right. the World Financial Center there later. But when they were building the towers, the Hudson was right on the other side of that wall. Right. And that, and this is not ruptured. This is not repaired. This is just as it was. You know, yeah, it's, it's got scratches on it and dings in it and whatnot. It's got, you know, problems happen elsewhere, but it kept the Hudson out. It didn't, it didn't crash in. And here it's unsupported, which is even more dangerous. But where the parking garage is, it does support that. Now, you have the PATH train. That's the, the, um, Port Authority Trans Hudson. It's like a subway that goes under the Hudson River from the New Jersey side up into the bathtub. Turns around, goes back out. What you're looking at in this bathtub picture, right where those, the parking garage is, see where those holes are? Just below those yep. holes and in the parking garage. That's where the subway goes out. And those are access ports to do something to the, the tunnel for the subway. But would you believe that the tunnel didn't get uh, destroyed? It, they they were worried about it because um, they had water down there, but with all the open, you know, uh, underground of the World Trade Center with all the fire hoses on it, the water had drained somewhere. Once they pumped it out, it stayed dry. It did not rupture. The tunnel, and that was built in the early 1900s, like 1909, I think is when the, the, um, path train station, you know, the first, first started, uh, sending, so it was built like, you know, 1905, 6, 7, somewhere in there. They built stuff pretty well back then. You can have, uh, you know, a building going bam down on top and it doesn't, you know, you take this, this hose kind of running under the, the Hudson River, you shake it, you know, it's going to wiggle, it's going to, you know, crack. So if there had been bombs, we'd have broke that wall. Bingo. Yeah, so not, when you hear the, is it, is it William Rodriguez that claims he can hear bombs in the basement? Yeah, well, we're not going to go <laughs> into talking about what somebody else thought they heard or whatever. We're looking at what we yeah. can observe, what we can observe ourselves. Yeah. We're not, yeah, depending on what I'm just going to say people. that if we if we're using that as a witness evidence, what he heard want bombs because if he had heard well, bombs, we'd have we'd, we'd, broke we're the wall. We talk about what we see. Okay, on on Figure okay. Thirty Six, that's uh, in February twenty second, two thousand two, when they were you know cleaning out the bathtub there. Uh, they got one of the path trains. The path train was parked under where Tower One had been, and and, and that's a whole uh, path train. It didn't get squashed. So when people talk about all the rubble getting stuffed into the basement, it didn't happen. Because the, the parking garage would have been crushed. That, that path train would have been crushed. And so, you know, also if, uh, this building had, had slammed to the ground, uh, you'd expect to see, you know, a pretty big sized earthquake. Looking at the mass and the potential energy and then comparing it to the Seattle Kingdom. Because there's a lot of, of, um, seismic uh, data for the Seattle Kingdom that they took down with controlled demolition because it's near some fault lines and they were really worried about you know major catastrophes could get get unzipped so they were monitoring all of the area with lots of different si- mobile seismic units uh, so that's why I picked the Seattle Kingdom because the evidence is is so available uh, that had an S wave and a P wave and it made a 2.3 equivalent on the Richter scale well Tower One made a 2.3 and then, uh, Tower 2 made it 2.1 less, but it's 30 times, that's 3 times 10 times the potential energy. It's a much bigger building that would go slamming to the ground. D- it didn't happen. You know, it actually, if you turned everything of Tower 1, we're going to compare Tower 1, it's, it's even more dramatic for Tower 2, but let's say from the 20th floor on up to the 110th floor, you turned Tower 1 to dust, and you just had you know, a 20 story building left. That's not even extra robust, but just, you know, 20 divided by 110, that proportion, you know, just as though the weight was evenly distributed, but it's more heavy at the bottom. But we'll say it's evenly distributed. If you just have that 20 story 
building left at that footprint and drop it to the ground, I would expect it to make like a 2.3 on the Richter scale. So what about the other uh, 90 stories? Not only that, the stab wounds across the street in adjacent buildings, you don't see anything, any stab wounds, but really much above the uh, 18th floor. 